Cool. Thank you. Um, we can stop at the mouth there. At Grew up the, watching uh, Hank Parker on TV, and now I get to go fishing with him 25 years later. I don't care what the wind's like, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> hey, today's show was really a great, great show, a lot of fun. I met Jerry Blake in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He has a guide service called Love of the Hunt Guide Service. I went out to New Mexico and elk hunted with Jerry, and all we talked about was big smallmouth at the Thousand Island. He doesn't live very far away, so I said, hey, we can hook up and make it happen. So I'm hooking up with Jerry Blake on the Thousand Islands and going to try to catch some big smallmouth. Stay with me, I'm Hank Parker. Well, we got us a little challenge here. We got small craft advisories. We got a 25 mile an hour gust winds. And so we're at the mouth of Lake Ontario up above Cape Vincent. And we're going to try to get behind these islands. We're gonna have a really rough ride. So the man holding that camera, he's gonna have a fun time in all this rough water. But man, you're just gonna get beat up. But you can take it. tell you we're hunting in the mountains of New Mexico with love of the hunt and all we're talking about is smallmouth fishing, smallmouth fishing, smallmouth fishing. Catch more fish now than you oh, absolutely. So Jerry said I would die to get to go with you on a smallmouth trip on the Thousand Islands. I don't live but two and a half hours away. Man would that be cool. I said all right let's work on that. We're gonna make it happen. Jerry shows up. We got one day to fish we got 40 mile an hour wind. Right then, she's rough. Probably a sustained 25 to 30 with gust up to 40. Flying three flags, brother. There ain't no way on earth we're gonna be able to fish where I found the fish before Jerry got there. So I got Bobby Williams, who's very familiar with that water, running camera for me. And we felt like we could put in behind the island and run in minimal waves. We're in Lake Ontario now, where these islands come together and turn into a big flat. So we go out and get right on that break line and start fishing on a drift. I'm using a lipless crankbait, just like this bad boy. And Jerry is throwing an old Hank Parker spinnerbait. Got a good one. And we're just going down that flat, and we think that's going to be our key. We're going to find these fish. Not a bad one, Dusty. <laughs> not a bad one, but not a good one. <laughs> not a bad one, but not well, we don't. A good one. Jerry catches one or two, and we catch maybe a little bitty guy here or there. That's Molly. Well. They must really be biting, I caught one. <laughs> and so Bobby and I think about a place that we caught them before. What you finding? But it's about a 17 mile run across Lake Ontario. We're going for a slow ride. Could be rough. Yep, it can be, I'm serious. I mean, it can be scary. Now, scary. let me just say this to you. It's really, really important to always be safe. We decided that we were gonna go out there, even though I can brag on this boat all day long. Guys, we're talking about the Great Lakes. We're talking about some treacherous conditions. So Bobby and I agreed, if, it, if we feel like it's threatening, we won't go. And I really want this to be a great time for Jerry Blake. So we make up our mind and we make the run. I just don't like to get in a hurry. This Z boat, it is a Z521L, and I ran a Z521C for many a year. And I couldn't imagine 
anything being better until I got the elbow. Man, we went across Lake Ontario in those big waves, super dry, super comfortable. We did not get in a hurry. Now, we weren't in a bass tournament trying to get there in 10 minutes. We took our time, no problems at all. Never did I get nervous, never did I feel like we were putting anything at risk. This boat did an awesome job and we stayed dry. Now we get out there and it's rough. She's a bit breezy, eh, guys? I don't know, Hank, that looks like a good spot to stop and take lunch. Not yet, Dusty, you got about two more hours. <laughs> it, it is really rough, but we're inside of a little bay. It's an unusual place. It, it's a private owned place on an island in the middle of Lake Ontario. I'll say the middle, it's way, way uh, east side of Niagara Falls, but <laughs> nevertheless, it's a unique little place and we'd caught them there before. <laughs> Holy cow, look at the size of that. Holy cow, he caught one, Dusty. Now, when we get up there, a slide. we got 30 mile an hour wind. And so as we work our way in, you've got grass on the bottom, You've got maybe some moss that's going to stick to your bait. It's hard to beat just a regular old sinking bait. That is a hard bait to beat. Dusty, shoot one, look here. Shoot them like that and let them sink, okay? But you can't fish this thing in 30 mile an hour wind. The wind was blowing so hard it would water ski. Just the catch in your six pound or eight pound line, it jerked this thing out of the water. You could not fish it. So we found ourselves in a unique position. Spinnerbait wasn't really the ticket. The lipless crankbait, it was too much grass. So what are we going to do? Well, for whatever reason, these fish really, really like the tube. That's a big one. That's what we're looking for. So out of everything we could throw, Nothing worked like a tube. <laughs> That's a five pounder, my friend. No way. <laughs> now, I'm gonna show you a tube I'm really excited about. I love this tube. This tube's got the perfect amount of tail, the perfect amount of body. This right here is about as perfect a tube as you'll ever want to see. Boy. Oh, I don't have a phone. Where's your phone? Uh, right in there. Oh, okay. I've never caught a bass that big. Well, you have now, Jerry Dusty Blake. Now, how are you gonna rig this tube? Yeah. There's a couple of different ways to rig it. If the bottom was clean, you could get away with rigging this thing just by running a tube weight that we have here. Got a little rattler in it. You could just rub that, run that tube weight up in there and boom, but it won't work. It will not work where Jerry Blake and I are fishing. It will not work. Biggest bass ever for Biggest Jerry bass ever. Dusty Blake. I'm the only one in the world calling him Dusty, so he's <laughs> Jerry Blake. It's a stud. All right. Show that bad boy to the camera. Holy cow. Isn't that? <laughs> That's a big one. All right, ease him back down there in the ocean, my friend. Good job. Now, a guy showed me this, and as dumb as this looks, I want to show you this. So I want you to watch, and I may have it wrong, and you guys that showed me how to use this, if you're watching and I got it wrong, please call me and tell me. But this is the way they rig this thing. They put the hook in here like this, and then they come out like right here with the hook. Then you pull the weight in like this, and when you get it there, you turn it around like this. Now you've got, you've got the weight inside with the hook coming back. Then you put the eye to tie the line to, and then you bring your hook through. See what we got? Look at that. That rascal's weedless. Did you see that? Look at that. Boom, and there's your hook. So now, that's weedless. I can't believe that. Well, it's a little aggravating to rig, but look at it. That rascal is weedless. And now you can fish it in that grass without getting grass all over it. So you can put as heavy a head, you know, I got all sorts of weights of heads. I can put all sorts of weight, whatever I need, and with the wind blowing 30 miles an hour, you need some weight. 
Check out this big dog. How about a three quarter ounce, half ounce, quarter ounce, three eighths, three sixteenths. But that's pretty slick and it makes that tube work. How does a giant. Whew. That's a big one, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Parker. We're fighting some terrible, terrible wind, but I'm telling you, we're catching a few fish, paying off, brother. Man, I'm telling you, this wind's about to blow us down, but it's not stopping the fish from biting. So you stay with me. I think we're going to catch another one. That's a good one there, buddy. <laughs> I think I'm still shaking a little bit. <laughs> that was a show enough good one. <laughs> Hank's show is made possible in part by Luz, Feel the Difference, and by Minn Kota, Soft Science, Solar Bat, and Talon. This segment of today's show is brought to you by the Plano A-Series Tackle Bag. This timeless outdoor look is designed for the serious sportsman. Plano protects your passion. Now it's time for Hank's tip of the day. All right, one of the baits uh, we've never really had, uh, at least in the exact form, is, you know, like the beaver style or a, a true flipping bait. This is called our four inch bunker hog. And again, it's just taking something and that's in the marketplace and beating them. It's that simple. So you can see uh, a lot of, a lot of these, these style baits, they have a groove not only in this side, which is the bottom, but they have a groove in the top side. Well, we took that groove in the top side off because here's the thing, you're throwing this thing around structure. So it's, it's going through some nasty stuff. And what happens if there's a groove up top your hook point's in there, oh, yeah. and it ain't hooked into anything. Yeah, it just comes free. Yeah, and so you're constantly yeah. hooking the post, you're hooking grass. Oh, yeah. So we took that out and made it made it pointed, made it beefy, so you got plenty of the pitch for long pitches under a dock, and these legs are strictly for, for weight is all they are. I have actually twisted my line because I wanted to get away from that dang groove because I'm getting hung up in the grass. So I set my hook off to the side, and then when I wind it in, yep. it twists my line. Now, it doesn't prohibit me from getting a bite when I pitch it in there, but every time I wind it in, my bait's rolling over. But I do that to get away from that groove. I love the fact that you don't have it. Yep, that's a big deal. So that it's just, is a big deal. It's another bullet in your gun. Another bullet in the gun, I like that. Thank you, you know, all the ribs just you notice even the little texturing we do on the legs, that's all on purpose. Because the more water that touches that bait, the more power bait that's in the water. I like that. I like these little bug eyes. Be sure to put him back in there straight. I might end up with him. <laughs> that's probably about 60 or 70 casts in there. Just do exactly what you're doing. Just keep throwing, throwing, throwing. I got one up here. This one's still sitting on his nest right here. The two days before Jerry came and the day Jerry came, nothing worked on those smallmouth for whatever reason as well as a tube. There he is. Got him. Now a little gulp leech on a finesse rig Ooh. on a drop shot Got worked hard. really, really, really good. Look at the other one chasing him. Yeah, I so I'm not gonna say it didn't work as well, but again. The wind was blowing so hard, you couldn't even hardly fish a drop shot unless you put a chunk of lead on that thing. I've been wanting to meet you for about the last 30 minutes. So this was the bait of choice. You're not all that big. I thought it was a monster. And I would see a big bed or an area, and I would park the boat where I could see a bed in front that I could fish and a bed behind us that Jerry could fish. And we would just put these tubes on that bed. He's a nice one. It's a good one. That is a good one. Not like your last one. Critical, critical, critical. Swim that bait into that bed without getting any grass on the bait. If you had one little stem of grass, they would not bite it. So you had to swim that bait into that bed and then be patient. Oh, there he is. Jerry yeah. had a better angle at the back of the boat and the wind, and he was wearing them out. Woo, that's a good one, buddy. 
So even if he did or didn't, I'm gonna say that because that's my defense for him catching all these big fish. Now wasn't that nice of me oh that position the boat and let you catch that fish? He's all yours. He's all mine. He's all yours. Good job, buddy. Thank you. You're doing great, man. You are catching them. Hank's show is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. And by Pennzoil. This portion of Hank's show is brought to you by Berkeley. Catch more fish. Oh yeah, I got it. All right, mark that fish. I'm gonna pull up here and let you fish it. Mark it, see right where that bed is, and I'll pull up here and drop the talons and you catch it. So Hank, you have talons and you have them encoded with spot lock. Isn't that like an overlap? Doesn't it? <laughs> Why do you, how do you use or do you even need both? I absolutely definitely need both. When I'm in 10 foot of water or less, there's no way I'm gonna depend on spot lock because that global positioning unit well, as the wind blows or boat traffic comes, it'll move. And so your trolling motor kicks on, kicks off, kicks on, kicks off, and stirs up the water in that especially three, four, five foot water, where once you deploy those talons, there's no more noise at all. You're on a boat dock. I mean, you are anchored solid. So my rule of thumb for the most part is anytime I'm in six, seven foot of water or less, I'm gonna talon down. If I'm in 10, 12, 15 foot of water, I'm gonna hit spot lock. We have found us a place that we're actually out of the wind and we're not killing them, but we are catching one every little while and it's making me very, very happy. You know, most of the time in the old days, and still a lot of people today say, well, there's no fish in a day. There, there's no way we're gonna get out of this wind. We'll just hang out in the hotel and we'll fish tomorrow. No way on earth. I mean, we had one day to fish, we're gonna go make it happen. Now I'm not gonna take a chance and I'm not gonna ever suggest that you risk your life to go fishing, but all in all, we took adverse conditions, oh. put it together, and had a day of catching some honker, honker smallmouth. Jerry caught his personal best ever. I don't think it weighed six pounds, but it was it was over five and a half by an ounce or two. Uh, how awesome is that? Man, we caught lots and lots and lots of four and a halves and we just had a ball under those adverse conditions. But the tube was the beta choice. Fluorocarbon line made a big, big, big difference. Talons, talons were essential for us to talon down. Uh, spot lock when it was too deep on our troll motor. All of those things put together gave us the opportunity to fish. 25 years ago, no talons, no spot lock. I don't know what we'd have done because you couldn't have held it in there on the troll motor stay on those beds. We depended on our talons and we depended on spot lock. And when you put that all together, it equals a big bag of honker smallmouth. <laughs> Holy cow, look at the size of that smallmouth. Now is it lunchtime? No, not quite. This portion of Hank's show is brought to you by Berkeley. Catch more fish. Yeti coolers built for the wild. And by Plano. Hummingbird, and by Fraybill. Looking for more bass fishing tips and techniques from legendary angler Hank Parker? Go to hankparker.com. You'll have full access to all things Hank, including articles, videos, sponsor news, tips, television schedules, and much more. How are we doing? Good, yourself? Good. She was a bit breezy out, eh? 
Hey, we've had a great time. We may get to go back out on the water, or we may not. We're waiting on the storm to pass, so we're gonna see what's happening. It's early, I mean, we're talking 1.30 in the afternoon. Beautiful, beautiful day other than 40 mile an hour winds. <laughs> It's a bit breezy is what I like to say. It's a bit breezy. She's a bit breezy, eh, guys? If we don't get to go back, Babalu has been my official camera boat for two days. He drove all the way from North Carolina up here just to run camera boat for me. That's how good a guy he is. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we're out here fishing with Hank Parker. I don't know if you know it or not, but those guys are not impressed. <laughs> and Jerry Dusty Blake. I think I'm still shaking a little bit. Known as Jerry Blake to the rest of the world, is gonna go back and chase some elk this fall. If you wanna go chase the elk, how they get a hold of you? You can go to lohoutfitters.com. L-O-H. Got it on his hat. Love of the hunt. Love of the hunt outfitters.com and you can go elk hunting. New Mexico. In New Mexico, but I'm gonna go bass fishing. And so we're either gonna say goodbye and God bless you and we'll see you next week, or we'll be right back after the words, uh, these wonderful, incredible words from these incredible, fantastic sponsors. <laughs> we'll be right back. Maybe. Maybe, or if not, see you next week. <laughs> How about that? We covered it. God bless you. God bless you, even if we do come back from a commercial break. We're coming back. <laughs> you know, it couldn't have been much better. It was a little rough. Had, had, some, uh, had some good boat rides. We had a really bad storm roll in. We had to run from it, kind of broke up the party. But I think Jerry had caught about all he wanted to catch. I'd have stayed out there for two more weeks. But man, what a great time. What great shape the Thousand Islands. Uh, all those gobies have made those fish grow. In the old days, three pounds was a honker. Now three pounds is nothing. I mean, they are everywhere. Four, five, six pound smallmouth is just crazy. We had a blast. Jerry Blake is a hoot to fish with. Fun to hunt with. He's got a guy search called Love of the Hunt. So what awesome it was the love of the fishing trip for us today. I hope you enjoyed it. We had a ball. God bless you. I'll see you next week. I'm Hank Parker. And don't forget to visit us at hankparker.com, the place for tips, giveaways, and more. The house needs painting, the grass needs mowing, where's he at? Gone fishing.